A little bit of a size difference here, but these are the latest and greatest from both companies. For Goody Reader, this is Peter, and today we have the Kindle Oasis on the right and the Kobo Aura 1 on the left. We are going to dive right into it and show you guys the form factor. So we have a flush screen and bezel, as you can see right there. We have three clean sides, one, two, and three. USB port on the bottom, and on the back we have the power button right there. It's also a sleep button if you push it one time. Kobo Rakuten logoing on the side and a nice textured back. Now the Kobo, uh, the Kindle Oasis is where it gets really interesting. You have a case that you don't have any choice in buying or not. It comes with the device. It is a sleep cover as well as magnetic snap, leather on the outside. It is also an external battery. So it snaps right on via magnets. And don't worry about it being asymmetrically designed like you see here because it does have a gyroscope to flip upside down although you cannot turn it off and it is extremely sensitive but we'll look at it here we have the contact pins on the back that matches the ones of the case Amazon logoing on the back super super thin it's really bulky right here where most of the components are USB port power button physical page turn buttons and of course once again the magnetic snap for the case Kobo has always been known for having a dynamic home screen. Things change as you open them with the web browser, syncs, um, overdrive, whatever you use will update itself. Kindle has slowly become more of a nice refined home screen. You see you have the toolbar on the top and things kind of become more, um, they, they kind of get refreshed as you go. See we've opened a PDF, a couple books, and then we have the ads of course recommending books to us. So we're going to open up an ebook now. Looking at the ebook experience, it's instantly noticeable that the 7.8 inch Kobo Aura 1 displays more text on the screen, obviously. It really makes the Kindle Oasis look really, really tiny. Page turns are about the same speed. Kindle's a little bit more snappy, has to display just less text, of course. Now we have it on the same fonts. We can open up the font menus by tapping in the center. You see we have both Cecilia, Cecilia. Um, the Kindle has about eight settings of fonts you can change. They all change live. However, the Kobo has a lot more customization because you have these slider bars. So you can actually slide them along and change it kind of dynamically like that. You also have line spacing, margins, justification, font, all on the same screen. Kindle, you have to do some digging. You got to go to page for line spacing. There's some reading progress stuff right there. Uh, orientation, margins, you can make the margins small. Everything changes live. So long pressing on the center of any of the words will give you, they're both equally <laughs> slow loading the dictionary for some reason, so they'll give you a little dictionary definition, then you can make highlights and notes. We're going to make a note just to show you guys the keyboards. So Kindle projects himself in such a way where it's a conventional QWERTY keyboard. All the letters are staggered like that, you see, and they're on an angle, whereas Kobo is up and down, which is technically not a conventional QWERTY layout seeing that the Q is above the A, but they both type all right. I would say the Kindle's a little bit more responsive, kind of register a lot quicker. No, it saves successfully. You don't get that little notification on here too that stalls your reading progress. Uh, and as we saw there, there's also a couple other things. You can do highlights, share, you can share to Facebook, you can search in book, Wikipedia, Google, same thing on here. You get uh, this book, Kindle Store, and a lot more. PDF files are where it gets really different. The gap really starts to widen between these two. So on the Kindle, you can page turn pretty quick, forward and back, just like that. On the Kobo, that takes a long time. So we'll do a quick pinch and zoom on the Kindle. Kindle gets right in there and you're able to move it around pretty much with ease, a little bit of choppiness. You get a mini map in the corner. We'll go ahead and let go on there. And then we'll double tap to go full view. So that's all pretty quick to manage that. Now let's go to the Kobo. So the pinch and zoom is really slow. Like I'm not even like really, really slow. And you can see that it's just inching along and we'll stop there as to not make this video too long but just to accentuate my point double tap to go out so really it comes down to do you have to pinch and zoom the document you're loading on here 
or can you read it full screen? That's what it comes down to because if you have to do some pinch and zooming, it's going to get really painful. Kindle also goes a step further. You can actually long press words in the PDF and do things to it just like you can in a book. Highlight notes, share. You can even do translation if you copy a body of text. Whereas on the Kobo, there is no such feature for long pressing. It won't allow you to do that. So the PDF experience is just the way you see it here. Now, if you thought the gap got really big when it came to PDFs, when it comes to light, I think the Kobo has the Kindle beat. If we look at this right here, we'll notice that both e-readers display the light perfectly around all four corners. If I had to choose anything to complain about, it would be the little LED spaces you see here on the Kobo. You can see the little black spaces. Other than that, it's like perfect. Now, here's the thing about the Kindle. The Kindle has light. You can turn it up and down. That's great. You can never actually turn the light off either. It's always just a little bit on. The Kobo, you can turn it up and down just like you can with the Kindle. You can turn it off entirely. It also has auto. However, we can also change the white balance based on our current um, environment. So if we're outside and it's you know cloudy versus being really sunny, or you're inside versus and you're inside and you have halogen versus fluorescent, you can actually change the white balance to almost candlelight. Look at that. It's really quite interesting. So if you're not really liking the blues you see on the Kindle, you that's all you that's all you, you have no choice. It, the screen is the screen. Whereas on the Kobo, you can change that if you want kind of a peach beige or kind of a stone or a, a blue white. You have the full um, you have full control over that as well as having auto white balance sensor. So when it comes down to these, it's hard to compare them on the exact same scale because they're not. This is six inch, this is 7.8. This has auto white balance control. This doesn't, but it has a really crazy battery where you get 81%, uh, right now I'm currently sitting at 81%. We had 100% here. And once this dies, it starts charging off of the cover. It's really quite interesting because you almost get a double battery life, but it's just, it's kind of a, like a parallel drain. It's really nice. Um, this is good with PDFs. This isn't. This has more screen real estate. This doesn't. And so if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them below.